In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the cumulative volume delta for any asset pair on any time frame for free using Python. All you need is a set of tick data or trade data, and I'll be showing you a free source of crypto tick data in this video so that you can follow along. Now, if you haven't heard of the cumulative volume delta before, there's an excellent article over here at jumpstarttrading.com, which goes over it quite well, in my opinion. But the general gist of things is that you look at the list of trades, and for each trade, you label it with whether the maker involved in that trade was a buyer or a seller. So if the market maker was a seller, that means the market taker is a buyer. And therefore, that trade was the result of a market buy order. And if you start getting lots of market buy orders, that indicates that people are really quite eager to get a hold of the asset. And vice versa for when you have lots of market sells. So what we do here is we start with a given anchor point. So this could be the start of the day, or in this case, the start of a new week. We start at zero here, and we can see for this asset that this hourly candle here closes out at minus 646. So that means that over the course of this one hour, 646 Ethereum in this case, was market sold above and beyond what was market bought. So let's say 3,000 ETH was market bought, well then 3,646 ETH was market sold. And you continue this the whole way along, you can see in the next bar, again, we had more sells than buys. The next one was an uptick, so we had more buys than sells, etc., etc. And then you continue doing that until the end of your time frame. So I've done this on a weekly basis. You restart again from zero and then you keep going. Generally speaking, the volume delta will match the market trend. So if the volume delta is increasing, generally the price is also going to be increasing. And you can see that these two graphs are roughly the same shape if you account for these discontinuities here where we reset at the anchor points. But one thing that this metric can be really good for is detecting false breakouts when you have divergence here. So you can see there's an uptrend and the volume delta increases to show it. So up here, we've got the ETH price. And if you were just watching the price chart here, you might think that this was about to break out into a higher high. But the volume delta here is telling a completely different story. It just goes pretty much monotonically down from here. And it can give you a strong clue that this potential breakout here is in fact fake. So let's head on over into a Jupyter notebook here and we can get going. The first thing you'll need, as I alluded to earlier, is a set of trade data. The easiest place to find that is on data.binance.vision. So this is a Binance website where you can go and get spot or futures data. So I'm going to go spots, let's say monthly trades. And I've picked an asset which isn't that commonly traded. So I've picked uni USDT. So you can go down here and just grab the trades for the last month for December 2022 in my case. The only reason I picked this asset is that there aren't as many trades and therefore it's not going to take as long to process for the purposes of this video. If you need live updates on the cumulative volume delta, you can follow pretty much the same methodology I'm showing in this video. You'll just want to hook up your data source to some kind of web socket, and you can stream the raw trade data from pretty much every exchange. They all have some kind of web socket connection where you can stream these trades live. But for now, it's helpful to just have a bulk CSV here. So go ahead and download one of these or whatever other data source you might have. And if we head on over to the folder here where it's stored, you can see it's just a zip file, then you extract it, you get the CSV. And it's basically just trade ID, price that it was sold at, the volume in the asset, so this is 146 uni, 
the volume in the quote asset, so this is going to be USD, the time that the trade took place, this is if the buyer is the maker or not, and this is whether the price was matched at the best price. You can find more details on that at the Binance documentation. So let's go ahead and just load this tick data in here. You'll need pandas in order to get going here, so pip install that if you don't already have it. From there, it's a fairly easy read CSV statement here, so pd.read underscore CSV. Copy and paste the name of the file, and let's see what that looks like, so df. Now, read CSV here has assumed that the first entry in the file is the column header. In my particular case, that is not true. It's actually the first row of data, so we need to tell pandas what the column names are here. You can do that with just the names variable here. So the first one is the ID, the second one's the price, and I'll just fill the rest of these in here. Okay, let's run that again and see what it looks like. That looks reasonable to me. The next thing I'll do is convert this time here and set it to the index. We're going to be doing some resampling later on, so it's important that we have a date time index in order for pandas to work its magic. So we'll do df.time is equal to pd.2 underscore date time. df.time unit is equal to milliseconds. Different exchanges do it in different ways. Some will give you nanoseconds, some will give you seconds. In our case, Binance is giving us milliseconds here. So if I run that, that will convert things to a normal date time format. You can see we've got data right the way from the beginning of December here to the end. And then finally, we want to set that as the index. So df.set underscore index time and in place equals true here. All right, so that is looking good. We've got our date time index. Now let's calculate our volume delta, the thing you're all here for. And in general, it's surprisingly easy here. So we're just going to add a new column on the side here for sell volume, and we're going to add another column for buy volume. So what that's going to look like is df buy vol, so buy volume. That's just going to be equal to the quantity whenever we have a market buy order. And we have a market buy order whenever is buy a maker here is false. Now there's a quirk of Python, which if you evaluate a Boolean variable as an integer, so if I do false in here, you get zero. And if I do int true, you get one. Or the same if I do something like float here. For example, you get 1.0. So we're going to abuse that here and say that by vol is equal to df dot quantity multiplied by one minus df is by a maker. Now that might not make much sense, but I'll explain it in a second. If we run it, we can see that we've got the exact same value as quantity here whenever the buyer is the taker here, which is exactly what we want. And we can see whenever the buyer is the maker here down at the bottom, we have a value of zero in this column. So all pandas is doing is it's essentially going down row by row here. It's saying, look, we want this column to be equal to this column multiplied by one minus this value. Now, as we just saw, false evaluates to zero. So one minus zero is still one. So effectively, it's just one times this value. But whenever this value is true here, well, we saw that this evaluates to one. So this value multiplied by one minus one is just this value multiplied by zero. And that's how we're going to separate out the buy and sell volumes here. So I can do the exact same thing on a new line here, and we'll say sell volume instead. And all we have to do is get rid of the one minus, because this is the inverse. Everywhere where this is zero, we want the quantity, and everywhere where this is non-zero, we want it to be zero. If I plot it out here, we can see what's happening. It just so happens that nearly all of these trades are instances where the buyer is the taker, but we have the one here, so we can we can verify that this is working as expected. And when the buyer is the maker, i.e. the buyer has some kind of limit order, then the taker is a seller, 
and therefore this counts as aggressive sell volume, which is the right way of doing things. Now the natural next step here is to calculate the volume delta at every single trade time. And that's very, very easy to do. You just make a new column, call it, let's say volume delta, why not? And we just set that equal to the buy volume minus the sell volume. So DF buy vol minus DF sell vol. So let's run that cell here and see if that's been calculated properly. So it's just this column minus this column. So these are all going to be the same. And then this one's minus nine, which is exactly what we want here. Now we don't really need any of the other columns for what's about to come. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the volume delta on its own here. So I'll make a new series here and call it vol delta. And that's just going to be equal to DF vol delta. And then we can print it on out here for good measure. So that looks reasonable to me. Let's go ahead and aggregate all this up now. And so if we go back to this graph here, you can see roughly what we need to do. At every single one of these anchor points here, which can be however far you want to specify, that's personal preference, we need to start cumulatively adding all of the volume delta together. So I've got it set to one week here. So for the first week, we add all of these volume deltas together. So we add this volume to this volume to this volume to this volume all the way through to the end of the week. And then we reset. Thankfully, there's a very easy way of doing that in pandas. So I'm going to create yet another CVC and call it CVD for cumulative volume delta. And it's going to be equal to vol delta dot group by and then PD dot grouper and then put your frequency in here. So I'm going to set mine to seven days here. And then finally do the cumulative sum. So cumulative sum here and then print out the CVD. So the main thing is here, we just want to make sure that this grouper is actually working. So if I set this to a significantly lower value, so I set it to one minute here and do the whole thing again, we can see that these values are much lesser now because it gets reset to zero every minute. I'll set it back to one week here. Although I think it will aggregate slightly differently at one week versus seven days. I think that makes a difference because it'll aggregate it on a different day. Yeah, we can see the value is different. You don't necessarily have to reset it like this back to an anchor point at zero. It's just quite helpful because otherwise this cumulative volume delta could just keep getting progressively more negative and it's going to be very difficult to plot it on a chart. That's typically why it's anchored here. You can, of course, just get rid of this group by here and just let it run from the beginning to the end, but you end up with these really monstrously large numbers. So that's up to you. Regardless, let's continue here and resample this up. And if you noticed from before, we plotted this all out as open, high, low, close candles. And what's cool is you can just resample this like you would resample trade price data into open, high, low, close candles. So all you have to do is well create some new data frame here. We don't want to mess with our other ones. So we'll call it CVD candles. If we use the resample function here and then aggregate the whole thing, we can get all sorts of aggregations out of this, like the highest in a candle, the lowest in a candle, obviously corresponding to our open, high, low, close. So let's see what that looks like here. You can see we've got our max, main, first, and last. Let's just try getting one of them here. So I've got max. Seems to have not worked here. And that's because max is actually a function that you can call on a data frame. So what we'll actually want to do here is use this syntax. And that'll grab it for us as a series. We can also rename those columns here to what they actually should be called. So the open, high, low, close. That'll neaten things up a little bit. So the high, low, open, close here. Obviously, make sure you get those in the right order. Otherwise, it's going to look quite weird. And finally, we're on to the fun part here. So we can plot out these candles on an open, high, low, close graph, courtesy of Plotly here. So just import Plotly. And then after that, we can use Plotly's built-in candlestick plotting function here. So 
And that should be good if we do a fig dot show here. That will print everything out for us. So this very much looks like the chart that we had at the beginning, which is helpful. If you want to get rid of this range finder here at the bottom, which is turned on by default, you just have to do an update layout here. So fig dot update layout. So using this option here, the range slider visible equals false. Well, get rid of that range slider for us as it'd be quite annoying. We can zoom in on here just like any other plotly graph, take a look at the different values once we've filled them in here. So we make sure that the X, so the X axis here is just our date time index and then all the rest naturally fall in place here, the open high low close. It's a very handy function that plotly has for us here. Now, of course, the cumulative volume delta is nice, but it would be really nice if we also had the price to go along with this so that we can look at historical examples or if you're pulling this live, live trading data, and we can look for any divergences or anything like that. So we're going to pretty much do the same exact thing that we did to the volume delta here. So we're going to resample it if I go grab that. So I'm going to grab these three columns here. And all we're going to do is we're going to call this, say, price candles here instead of CVD. And instead of grabbing the cumulative volume delta here, we're just going to grab df.price. So if you remember, right the way at the beginning up here, we had this price value. And as I mentioned earlier, resampling the cumulative volume delta, very, very similar to just resampling the price data here from tick data into open high low close. So let's go ahead and do that. We have what seems like relatively sane open high low close values here. So let's add this to our plot here so that we can have two graphs at once. I'll copy and paste what we've got up here. And all we have to do is import make subplots here from Plotly. Then go ahead and create a figure to replace this one that uses subplots. So we have two rows because we want the price chart and then the CVD chart. One column, we don't have any other data. And I'm saying shared x-axis equals true here. So that means when we zoom in on a specific point on the graph, the dates are going to be perfectly aligned. So that doesn't get confusing. This will have to change a little bit here. So instead of doing go.figure, we just do fig.addTrace here. So we can get rid of all this. So fig.addTrace. Get rid of these extra brackets here that we don't particularly need. But add another set here. We can also set the row and the column here to make sure that this appears in the right place. So this is the CVD, which I want to be below the price. Therefore, I'm going to set row is equal to 2 and call equal to one. Let's just copy and paste this and also add the price data in here. And we'll change the row here to make sure it's the right one. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So we've got our two charts here. They seem to be in the right order. Annoyingly, the range slider does reappear here if you plot multiple subplots. The way I found to get rid of that is instead of doing fig.update layout here, you do fig.update x axis. And then get rid of that bit. And that should work in terms of getting rid of that annoying range slider. X axis, not x axis. There we go. So that's us done here as far as the cumulative volume delta indicator goes and how to plot it, at least for historical data. I'll leave some links in the description to some of my other tutorials, which will help you get up and running if you want to run this thing with live data and plotting it in frameworks like Plotly, which allow you to do real-time updates.